Welcome to chapter 26 of Pax. Kid! Peter twisted around so sharply he nearly fell over. He'd been certain the guard station was empty. He'd watched for ten full minutes to make sure before leaving his cover. A soldier came out from behind a truck. He lifted his rifle butt to the sign chained over the barricade. No entry. Peter straightened up as tall as he could on his crutches. It had been two days since he'd spoken to anyone. Two days since the bus driver had said, I don't know what you're really up to, son, but I doubt it's a good idea. You want, I can take you back on the bus tonight. No shame in that. And Peter had replied, no thanks, because there would have been shame in turning back. But then the bus driver said, all right then, good luck, and let him out. Not a soul had spoken to him that night. The town was on the perimeter of an evacuated area, and the few people he passed cast their eyes down, picked up speed as if they couldn't afford to make contact with anyone who might need help. Nothing extra here, their look said. All is already lost. The next day, from sunrise to well past sunset, most of the morning, he had traveled on roads through vacant towns, past abandoned schools and playgrounds and neighborhoods, spookily silent without their squeaking tricycles their car radios, their pickup ball games. The only familiar sound had been water running through garden hoses when he filled his thermos. He hadn't seen any other, other humans, but he'd seen the animals they left behind. A skittish pony tugging up grass in front of a church, dogs eyeing him balefully from behind dumpsters, dozens of skinny cats sliding away their flanks hollow as spoons. Hey, kid! The soldier moved closer. He eyed Peter's handmade crutches, the rough cast, the dirty clothes. We evacuated this area almost two weeks ago. Where have you been? Don't you, you don't know that? I know that, but I left someone down there. I'm going to get him. Take it easy. We checked the records. Everybody's out. He's not a person. Peter jutted his chin to find the soldier to argue that this mattered. Instead, the soldier's face changed became somehow younger, and Peter saw that he wasn't that long out of high school. He slid the rifle back into its sling. I have a dog, Henry. He didn't say anything for a minute, just looked down the road, as if he were hoping his dog would suddenly appear. And he turned back inside. I don't think anyone's walking him. My sister said she'd do it, but she works. You want to see his picture? Even before Peter nodded, the soldier had drawn out his wallet. He held out a picture, a beagle, an ordinary beagle. Peter's throat hurt. The corners of the photo were worn soft and colorless. The photo had been taken out a lot. That's Henry. I got him for my eighth birthday. His hips are bad now, but he still likes his walk, you know? Still likes to sniff out squirrels and stuff. I told my sister that, but... Henry won't understand where I've gone, is the thing. He'll wait at the door all day for me. What's yours like? I'll keep an eye out for him. Pax isn't a... Peter stopped. It didn't matter that Pax wasn't human. Why should it matter that he's a dog? He's red. Black legs. How big? Coyotes out here. They have pups this time of year. They'll take down a small dog if they have a litter to protect. He's pretty small. Peter shifted his weight off his blistered palms. Please, I've, I've come a long way to do this. The soldier gazed at his photo another minute before slipping it into his wallet. When he looked back at Peter, he seemed older again. We're holding them. But they're coming. You go in, but you've got to be back out by tomorrow. He pointed at Peter's crutches. You can do that? I can. So you'll let me through? The soldier looked around and leaned in. This road is patrolled hourly, but we only guard the main trail entrances. No one is stationed in the woods yet. You travel 20 yards in and no one will stop you. But listen, if you get caught, I didn't say that. Now get out of here. Thanks. Peter turned and started for the woods before the soldier could change his mind. Kid, I hope you find him. It was quiet in the woods, but... Here the quiet was right, and it was broken by sounds of wild things, which seemed to promise. Here Peter could imagine seeing Pax's red brush flicking between the trees. Here when he called, it was easy to imagine an answering bark. 
These things raised his spirit so much that he could almost ignore the pain in his palms and his armpits, bleeding and raw. For an hour, he pegged over ground that was so springy with decades of fallen pine needles, it seemed to lift him. When he heard the rough growl of a jeep, he ducked behind some brush until it passed. And after that, he walked along the road's edge, sure that whenever another patrol went by, he'd have enough warning to take cover. And then he was there. It wasn't a landmark he recognized or the way the road straightened out of its curve. It was a sense of betrayal that hung all around. He'd done something horrible here, and the place he remembered. Pax! He called, not caring if anyone heard him. Let the jeeps come. Let the whole army come. He wasn't leaving without his fox. Pax! Against his shouts, the silence only grew deeper. Ominous now, not promising. He started along the road again, calling and keeping his eyes to the gravel shoulder. He was sure Pax had the toy soldier in his mouth when the car had peeled away. Whenever Pax had given up on Peter, he would have dropped it. Peter wanted to hold it again in his hand, a solid proof that his fox had been here. He walked a quarter mile, half a mile, eyes down, and then he stopped short. He wasn't going to find that toy soldier because Pax wouldn't have given up. Not ever. Pax would never have thought he'd been abandoned. They were inseparable. Pax had known it all along. Peter was the one who had to learn it. If Pax wasn't here, he must have gone home to find Peter or tried. Maybe the river would have blocked him, maybe not. Dogs made it home against crazy odds all the time, and Pax was ten times smarter than any dog, so why wouldn't he be able to find his way? Maybe he was there right now. Home. Home was about ten miles southeast of the old mill, and the mill was probably four or five miles south of where he was now. So he'd head south, calling for Pax all the way. The gorge beside the mill would be too dangerous to navigate in the dark, so he'd sleep there, then make a descent at dawn. He would cross the river where it widened out at the mill, and then, after another ten miles of trails that he knew, he'd come home. Hold on, he said out loud. I'm coming. That's the end of 26.